Okay, everybody, this should be starting up any second, so I had to restart the stream again or make a new stream because YouTube doesn't like me anymore, I think. I don't know. So let me link everybody over. Uh, this should only take a couple of seconds, and then we'll get started here. Okay, good. So we do have it already. So here we go. Okay, link to new stream. Okay, let me get the new stream up here and then we'll get started. There we go. Hey, Ryan is here. It's been a while, Ryan. How are you doing? Let me get um, everybody up on the screen here. And say hello. All right. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. Uh, we've got Ryan here. It's been a while. Uh, glad to see you. Bar Moody is back once again as well. We got some old favorites. We got Laredo here again. Good morning, evening, Tim. Uh, inspired fellow students, I trust you are all making great progress towards our quest to the Holy Grail to make perfect piano maestros. I hope everybody is here as well. Did not get YouTube notification Luckily, got the email, which I accidentally sent late, but I did remember it. <laughs> uh, asparagus water is back. Welcome back again. Uh, doing well, says Ryan. Glad to hear it. We got Tanny back again. Mike back. Adria is here, of course. I won't get much out of from it. Uh, okay. Advanced for you, but that's okay. I'm still getting something out of it. Well, thank you um, for attending either way. I appreciate it. All right. Looks like we're going 22 strong here. Uh, so we're going to get started here in just a second. Hopefully everybody is doing well. I just want to make an announcement that next week, I know on the schedule it says we're having lessons next week, but I really thought about it, and uh, two things made my decision. One is that next week is Memorial Day weekend, so I really don't expect a lot of people to attend the live streams anyway. In fact, from what I remember last year, the lowest day of the year in terms of views and everything was on Memorial Day. So something about that day, even opposed to other holidays, people are just not around. So I've decided to take next week off from YouTube. Uh, so there's no live stream. You will still get the um, edited versions of what we did this week coming out Friday and Saturday next week. Or no, 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 Saturday and Sunday next week. So you will still hear from me a little bit. Um, and I may get to a couple of questions. But if I don't get to your questions next week, don't worry. Um, I'm just kind of like taking a breather. That was the second part of my decision was I just kind of need a break right now. Um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I've been learning a lot of new things uh, that I want to put into the channel. But in doing so, I kind of just have like spinning head syndrome where I just feel like uh, a little bit overwhelmed. I'm also uh, on the pro in the process, hopefully getting further um, into buying this house next week. I'm not buying the house next week. I mean, I just need to work on it um, a little bit more. I'm going to see what I can get a pre-approved for officially. And then um, if it's right, I'll um, I'll make a, a move. But I need to get mo like moving on it a bit more because all my time has really been put into between teaching and YouTube. So I just want to tell you all about that, that next week we will definitely not have uh, live streams and I will update the calendar and everything to reflect as much. It's the unofficial start to summer. That is true. Bernadine's here. Hello, Bernadine. Welcome back once again. Hey, David. Hiya, buddy. How's it going, David? Welcome to our classroom. And Rich is here. Welcome out, Rich. I haven't seen you in a little while. Glad to have you back as well. All right, hopefully everybody's ready to get started. I know I am. Now this lesson, let me get staff pad up here so we can begin. So it should just take a second. Yeah, I'm almost there already. So we're going to be talking about 6-8. We've talked about this during the stream before, but I don't think I've ever made a lesson just called 6-8 time signature. So I want to make sure one's out there. So like when you type it in, um, if you ever like have a question on whether I've covered it or not, then you can uh, find it in the search a bit easier. So let me do this. Okay. Perfect. All right. I think we're ready to rock. Uh, all right. Let me get the Facebook stream started real quick, and then we'll get right on with the show. Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to fear 6-8 times signature too, and then, yep, I did get used to it as well. I, in fact, I really disliked it. I hated it at first. All right, uh, just give me a second, everybody, to get this in here. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, just one more second, and then I'll be ready. Okay, all right, I think we're good. We're ready to rock. Hello, students, and welcome back out to our classroom. Your teacher, Tim, back again. Well, if it's your first time out, welcome to our classroom. Piano Lessons on the Web, where we meet live every Friday, every Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're new here, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And like the page if you're watching on Facebook because we have new things coming out all the time. And you don't want to miss a beat, of course. So today we are talking about how to play in 6-8 time signature. Um, wait, let me do this. Hi, students. Welcome back to our classroom. Tim here once again from Piano Lessons on the Web. And today we are talking about how to play in 6-8 time signature. So the... Th important thing to keep in mind about 6-8 as opposed to 4-4 four, four, is that when you were talking about 4-4 four, four time signature, uh, this is how I read every time signature, by the way. The top number, this tells you that there are four of something, right? And then the bottom number, if you actually get rid of that top number, turn it into a 1, have it 1 over 4, this is telling you that there are four quarter notes in uh, each measure. So, if we have 6-8, it's going to mean that we have 6 eighth notes in each measure. So let me, give me a chance to get this up here, and we'll take a look together. So there we go, 6-8. So there's a lot of implications as to what this does. So you have 6, a to, uh, equal to, by the way, 6 eighth notes in each measure, 6 eighth notes, which means you can have half notes, you can have quarter notes, you can have a different combination of notes. It doesn't mean that there are six notes in each measure. There are six, um, equal to six eighth notes in each measure, so six beats. So the one thing you got to keep in mind now is that the top number tells you how many beats in a measure, bottom number tells you that the what note gets one beat. So if it's four, that's the quarter note. If it's an eight, that's an eighth note. If it's ever a sixteenth, that's a 16th note. So that's how it works. You just put one over uh, the top number and then the bottom number. So one over eight is the eighth note. So you can have six eighth notes in each measure. Let me write this out. This is the simplest form or way I can explain six eight. That's really easy to visualize. That's if it will let me draw it here. Hopefully not any problems. Okay, here we go. So here we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six eighth notes. And all these are eighth notes because they have the single flag going on up there. So you would just count that very simply as one, two, three, four, five, six on the piano. In fact, let's get everything up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The thing to keep in mind about 6-8 as well is you may have noticed that they are beamed into groups of three, two groups of three to be exact. And that's going to come into play later when we talk about another way to count in 6-8. Now the thing is, is that I want you to ask yourself a question for a minute. And that question is, in 4-4, four, four, what note got one beat? Well, it's a quarter note, right? That's probably what you've been learning all along, that a quarter note gets one beat. Half note gets two beats, dotted half gets three, whole note gets four, etc. Well, in 6-8, we have to think about what implication there is from turning the beat from a quarter note to an eighth note. So essentially what we've done is we've cut the note value 
uh, or we've actually doubled the note values because now the eighth note was worth half a beat before. Now it's worth an entire beat. So the conversion is doubled. So that means that quarter notes are now worth two beats. Let me write out a little rhythm here. Eighth notes are worth one. And so anything before is now doubled. So a dotted quarter before in 4-4 four, four was worth one and a half. Well, one and a half times two is three. So now that gets basically what the dotted half note got before. So remember that quarter note now gets two beats. So this is going to take up one, two. Beat three is going to be here. And then four, five, six, just like that. So uh, it's going to be counted as one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. Okay, let's continue here. Let's do maybe a couple more examples of notes. Um, how about the half note? How many beats did a half note get in 4-4? Four, four? Well, it got two beats in 4-4, four, four, right? So now it's going to get what? Four, because it's now doubled. So this is actually going to get beats one. Uh, let me get the pen out here. It's going to get beats one, two, three, and four. Now, let's do a little math here. We have two beats remaining, right? Since we have four beats in, we need six total uh, that can fit in each measure. Well, what options do we have? Well, could we put in another half note? Well, no, right? Because a half note is now worth four, and then giving another four would give us eight. So we'd have two too many. But what about a quarter note? Well, you may be thinking quarter note's worth one, right? Wrong. It used to be worth one, and now it's worth two. This is the most confusing thing I came across when I first started learning 6-8 way back when, was remembering that now the quarter note, which I learned so long, was one B is now worth two. So you got the half note worth four, and then that last quarter is going to take up beats five and six, the last two beats. One, two, three, four five six just like that all right let's do a couple more examples just so you get the idea uh, what about actually i want to do really just one more example in terms of note values or actually two what about a dotted half note how many does how many beats does a dotted half note get now well it got how many in four four three right well now it's doubled so it's going to take up all six beats there's no re reason to play any more notes into this measure so this takes up one two three one two three four five six just like that let's talk about 16th notes for a second to just kind of put everything in perspective so how about we do um i don't know like an eighth and then two 16th notes I actually think it would work better like this. So just give me a second here. All right, good. And then let me just let's just repeat that again. Oops, too many. I goofed. All right. So here we go. So this uh, this first note's an eighth note because there's only a single flag going on right there. So this is going to be beat one, right? And then this next one, it's going to take up the entirety of beat one. This is going to be two. Now we have 16th notes, which we were counting as like the one E and is two E and is three and is and things like that. Well, now instead of getting quarter of a beat, it only gets half of a beat. So we're going to count this as one, two and, and then three, four and five, six and so you're almost pretending like these now are quarter eighth eighth quarter eighth eighth that's what they would be in four four so one two and three four and five six and just like that if you're a little confused on that part that's understandable just know get the general basis that everything now is worth doubled what it was before and now you're counting the six rather than four and that's really all there is to it there's one more thing i want to bring up about six eight now if you want to get better at six eight what should you do think about it 
What should you do? What have I been telling you? And maybe it is your first time here. But if you want to get better at anything in the world, you should do it more often. So if you want to get better at playing in 6-8, you got to be doing it uh, you know, over and over and over again. I, like I said, when I first started doing this um, way back when, it was really confusing for me. But you will get the hang of it. Okay, here's what I want to mention about... Uh, I was talking before about how they were grouped into two groups of threes. Now, this is very important. Once you get good at playing in 6-8. Oops. You know what I'm going to do? Use the old circle technique. Boom. Got him. Okay. So, oh, we need this. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so here I have two groups of three, as I was talking about earlier, and I want to talk about this again. Because once you get good at counting in 6-8, instead of counting every individual beat, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you're actually going to count them in two beats. What This is after you've like mastered, not mastered it, but you've gotten pretty good at playing in 6-8. So, you still play all six counts with the piano. However, you're actually just counting one and then two. One, two, one, two. And that kind of helps create a driving along kind of feeling. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's a little bit easier to count in your head as well. Again, when you first started counting 6-8, you probably want to count each individual beat. Like cut time, what we talked about last time, or a little while ago, it will actually help you make sure you're playing the correct amount of beats. But once you get better at it, you can group them into groups of two, um, just like you kind of could with cut time. And that kind of helps things move along a little bit better. Okay, let me answer some questions here that some people are chiming in with. I haven't had a chance to really take a look at that so far. It's pretty easy to be honest, but I support Tim. Thank you very much, Asparagus Water. Uh, Ryan says, I currently fear, dislike, and hate 6-8. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. Like I said, it's very normal uh, how you feel about it. Let me get this over here, actually. You know what? I realize that this arm stretches a bit, so now when I'm looking over here, I don't have to be so far away. Uh, okay, I like fewer. I like 6 eights, fewer ands. That's true, especially if you count it as the, um, the two beats rather than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because if you have 16th notes... In 6-8, you're still going to have to count all the ands. Okay, uh, Larea says, Oops, I have been such a naughty and delinquent boy, uh, given that I have not been acting, uh, interacting with you all on our Facebook page, Highs Behind a Tree. That's quite all right, Laredo. Brenda says, Good evening, all. Welcome back, Brenda. I think it's been a while. Welcome out to our classroom. Happy you could make it today. I was wondering, uh, Larea says, how, I was wondering how big and how small music counting can go fraction-wise in terms of time signatures. I believe it goes all the way down to 128th notes. I guess you could have a 256th note, but we won't talk too much about that today, but that's just uh, my understanding of it. Ryan says, and now is that the same as a whole note? Well, a whole note before was worth four beats, and now it's worth eight beats. So actually, that brings up an interesting point, Ryan, because you cannot have a whole note in 6-8 because it takes up too many beats. Instead, what you would do... And you know what? I need to make a lesson on ties. But instead what you would do if you wanted 8 beats total in 6-8, what you do is you would draw a dotted half note. That's 6, right? And then what... Well, we kind of did that before, so I won't ask you again. So we need another quarter note to make up the missing 2 beats. And hey, we have this kind of technique or symbol. That's if I can get it to work. What's funny is I had a student the other day. I'm, I'm so bad at getting this, like... Um, this tie to work that a student of mine the other day just like she just got it perfect every time because I, I have a smaller tablet I take with me on my music lessons and I cannot get this to work to save my life let me let's see well you get the idea you would have a tie there you go finally 
you would have a tie tying them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. You would still reset your counting, um, but that's how it would work. Okay. Are you having a Friday evening class next week, Tim? The answer is no, actually. So I'm taking off both Friday and Sunday of next week. Or is a whole note worth more? Okay, I think I answered that. I'm asking about the dotted half, that is. So the dotted half now is a whole note in terms that it takes up a whole measure, but you still want to count out six beats instead of four. So the higher the, the time signature, the longer the note value is held for. Let me think about that. I believe the answer is yes. I just need to make sure I understand the question. So the higher the time signature, like, like 6A or if it goes to 16th, the longer the note value is held for. Yes. That's true because if you had the bottom number be a 16, then everything then would be multiplied by 4. So the quarter note then would be worth 4 beats, I believe, if I'm correct. Um, it would be the 16th note that, yeah, I am correct, 16th note that will be worth um, one beat. So yeah, that is correct. Very good. Seems like you're catching on. Um, all right. Well, I was never very good at math. Guess I still am. <laughs> well, that's quite all right, Mike. Uh, Adria says, math is not my subject at all. I think the key is to subdivide the notes. Also set the metronome to 6-8 so you can hear the rhythm. Very true, Rich. So if you set the metronome to 6-8, and you're, you can even still count in two in your head, but you'll have the metronome counting out the six individual beats. I have found that uh, I have to count in my head or out loud more with 6-8. That's very normal. That's very normal. In fact, you should be counting in your head at least with 4-4. Four, four as well. Uh, with 6-8, I also watch the note count on my piano display. Okay, good. When I'm using the electronic one. Yes, I need the metronome to get the rhythm of it. And that's perfectly normal. This is real multitasking. David says, is that last note, uh, this last example the same as two triplets? Um, yes and no. It's the same as two triplets, like this one I think you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, it is the same as two triplets in that you're grouping um, them into groups of threes. You don't want to – triplet is a little bit different though because a triplet you're actually putting three notes in place of a single beat. These each individually have their own beat. So remember with like, um, like in 4-4 four, – four, let's see here. Let's bring us back to 4-4 four, four for a second. Oh, man, did that. That's not where I wanted it at all. Well, of course. Let's see. Okay, it's really not liking me today. But, all right, let's erase this then. The tie wasn't that important. Okay, so in 4-4, four, four, remember that a triplet, it looks almost the same, right? It's an eighth note goes like that. It has a 3 above it, though. And, of course, it didn't rate it out. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so there's a triplet, right? And you're going to count this as one triplet. But that only takes up one beat. That's not taking up one, two, three, which would take up half the measure. Um, so they, they are and aren't the same. I wouldn't think about them as the same thing. Um... So, really what I would think about is in 6-8 that that's a group of three eighth notes rather than a triplet. Because remember an eighth note in 4-4. Four, four. So, here's the difference between um, three eighth notes. You would have one and two. So, that actually takes up more beats than a triplet. Okay. Moving along, let's see what else we got here. Uh, funny that things that don't work in my favor is what um, what it takes to learn piano. Well, that, that's all right. You know, that's, I think that's pretty common. We all have something that doesn't work in our favor. 
Um, okay, Ryan says, okay, I didn't think about it for that value of the whole note in 6-8 being eight versus six. So a dotted half note is essentially a whole note in six, eight. Yeah, I you can think about it like that. You just had to make sure that you're not counting to four and you're counting to six instead. But I think you got the idea. I've been playing in six, eight, but it's always on a song I already know and have memorized. A few hymns are in nine, eight. That is true. So you can have nine, eight, 12, eight, uh, anything with an eight on the bottom. Okay, which popular songs or pieces were composed in six, eight? That's a good question. I should have came prepared ahead of time. There's one I have in mind. I don't. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, let me let me look this up really quick. But let me continue with some questions. A while. Um, do you have a simple tune to play in six eight? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna find an example. That's a good good point. So I can kind of show you how it's done. A lot of marches are in six eight time. Um, not a lot of them. But there are some though. Uh, Rich says, I'm currently learning the Kuja theme, okay, which is Final Fantasy IX, I believe. It's in 6-8. The only problem is the pedal. It's difficult with keyboard pedals. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> keyboard pedals are not as good as piano pedals, at least the ones I've ever had are not. Okay, ooh, Streamception. Okay, let me, let me find... Let's look up some stuff together, shall we? Shall we? Okay bring it back here okay so um famous pieces in six eights time signature okay hmm hmm all right uh house of the rising sun I like that song. Let's find that one. Let's see if that is in 6-8. I think that can be in 3-4 as well, but... Um, Uscore.com Nope, 3-4. Man. Um, hmm. Let me look through... Let me do this. Okay, Beethoven for Elise. That's not in six eight, is it? I thought that was in three eight. Um, let's get that original version if we can. Yeah, that's in 3.8. So that's, I wanted something in 6.8. I knew it. I knew it was lying to me. House of the Rising Sun. So I see that one up there again. So let's take a look at that. Let's see if I can find a an example out of that. That was one thing I forgot to do today. <laughs> was come up with an example ahead of time. All right, uh, give me a few like playthroughs of this, and then we'll talk about it because I've not I've played this piece before, but not recently. It doesn't look too hard though, so let's let's see if uh, we can do it. So here we go. Okay, let me keep trying. Okay, so here we have an example, House of the Rising Sun. So as you can see, the opening line with the bass clef 
is very simple 6 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can count the individual notes like I talked about. Or you can count it as 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. One, two. So, one, two, one, two. So as you can see, you can count it in those two different ways. So there's a very good piece actually to start out with, House of the Rising Sun. Um, I'll see if I can get a link for you guys. It looks like this is just like kind of a preview page. Um, but I was able to find it on 8notes.com. Playing the piano two, unit five is in six eight. Yeah, so playing the piano level two, that is true, um, because I did design a lot of those to be in six eight. You know what? In my music collection, see, this is why I need to really get back on to practicing, because then I would know like one right off the top of my head. Oh, that's in six eight. There's one. Um, you know what? I do have one. Let me think. Scherzo. Six eight. But I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, piano. I'm trying to remember who wrote this one because Scherzo is a very like. It could be anybody. It's a very common name for a piece. It's like Sonata. I've been learning Sonata. Oh, which one? Um, oh, they have his MP3s. I don't know. I'm trying to think that this witch hunt is not witch hunt. Uh, this hunt isn't worth it. Um, let's see, Aronsky. That sounds familiar to me, but I'm really not sure. Um, nope. That's not it. I can tell by looking at the score. All right. Let me... Let's look here, shall we? Okay. Um, hold on. You know what? I... Here we go. Yeah, Moonlight Sonata's in cut time, as I thought. Yeah, I don't know. You might have to just deal with <laughs> that one for now. Let's see. All right. Thank you for your example, Tim. Uh, truly appreciate it. You're very welcome, Laredo. All right, let's get... Everybody back in here again. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, uh, Adria says, Why does House of the Rising Sun sound so familiar to me? Probably because you've heard it. It's very famous. It's a very nice song, I think. Okay, I think it depends on the arrangement, 3, 4, 6, 8. Yeah, it definitely does. So you're going to find um, some 3, 4s in 6, 8 and vice versa. Oh, you're going to go on to Piano Level 3, Ryan. Congratulations on making that far. Uh, you must be progressing pretty well. All right, Mike says, Could a 6-8 time be converted to 3-4 time just by adding a measure in between um, the current measures? Could a 6-8 time be converted to 3-4 time? The answer is yeah. Yeah, you can convert 6-8 to 3-4. Thank you for the yeah. It would just def it would be two measures for every one measure. So yeah, you have that right. Larry says thank you for the example, Tim. Truly appreciated. Yeah, can you please send or repost the link for that House of the Rising Sun in six eight? I can't find the same one. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Um, you know what? If I don't find it now, I feel like I'm definitely going to forget. Okay, House of the Rising Sun, Sheet Music, 6, 8. Yeah, here we go. But, excuse me. Now, what I found, piano duet or piano trio, just piano, man. Piano, man. All right, let's try this. Oh, there it is. All right, let me get this over to you guys. Let me see. They might block the link on YouTube. They do that sometimes. I found it. Okay, there you go. Try that as well. If the link doesn't work, copy it and then put it, paste it into the... Uh, thing bar, address bar, and then click enter. Sometimes that gets around uh, any restrictions they might have. Uh, okay. Uh, 3, 4, and 6, 8 are the same mathematically, but each one has a different feel. Yes, that is very true. I should have brought that up. Uh, you're playing certain notes with an accent, sort of. That is true. So when you have 6, 8, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you have an accent on the beginning of each group of 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, Whereas if it was in 3-4, the accent and beats are on 1 and 3. 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and. So the accent would actually be on the G again. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So in 6-8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Where I'm accenting 1, 4, 1, or you can count it as 2. Where in uh, four, four, or three, four, we go one and two, three and wait, yeah, yeah, it's three, four, one and two, three and one and oh, it's so weird to count in three, one, one and two, three and one and two and three and one. It's so weird to me. I'd have to chart it out on paper, but that's the way it was. It would definitely shift off the accent. So Rich is absolutely right about that. Uh, let's see. The Doors did it and did a version of it. At Adria, okay. That could be it. Uh, I will have listened to it after the live stream. Great example. Thank you very much to Cecilia. Very welcome. And one thing I forget to before I forget to. <laughs> To mention it be, until we get to like sometimes we get to the end of the lesson i mention it uh if you like today's lesson feel free to leave a super chat because it really helps us out here helps support our great community as you know it takes a lot of time and effort and equipment to put this all together for you so any support is a very very much appreciated of course you can enroll in um, courses over on piano lessons on the web.com and ryan just read my my mind probably because with the um, delay you probably didn't get the message yet uh, Ryan says Tim I'm so grateful for all your hard work and instruction and in teaching me to play piano I have learned so much thank you thank you very much Ryan I really needed that today actually I really did um, the, those kind words and thank you for the ten dollars by the way but um, I, I think the words are even more more powerful because sometimes I I know you guys appreciate it um, but sometimes like I don't know. I don't know if anybody else here has a YouTube channel, but sometimes you like grind so hard and put so much work into it. And it, a lot of it has to do with seasonal things where like, no matter what you do at certain times of year, you can't like grow the channel the way you want. Um, so it gets like very, um, I don't know. It just wears on you. So th those words really keep me going. Thank you very much. And I, I get very kind messages all the time. And like I said, it's really um, because of all of you, that I continue making these videos and keeps me from going completely crazy. Um, but luckily we have the week off next week, so I think <laughs> I think it will make things easier for me. Uh, Ryan says, dude, you're my hero. Don't ever forget. Oh, my word. You uh, you might eat, even breathe piano and videos. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I don't know how I do it either. <laughs> That's true. I work too much. I really do. Uh, well, one of the reasons is I'm really trying to uh, buy a house. So I'm working like as hard as possible. Uh, but even more importantly than that, um, I'm really driven by uh, building our community and like just 
outdoing ourselves all the time, getting more people to show up for the live stream, getting more people engaged during the live stream. Um, so it's a big goal of mine to continually, you know, uh, keep things up. Oops, you must live, eat, etc. Tim has the best piano channel on YouTube, says Rich. Thank you very much, Rich. I really appreciate that. Um, kind words from you as well. You're a very supportive student as well. Well, you, you just reminded me, the Skype lessons that I know you were interested in, Rich, they are coming soon. Um, they are... Uh, what I need to do, I'll give you a status update. I've gotten everything on the web page done, and all I really need to do is like put it up on the like somewhere on the website where people can find it up on the toolbar. And then I need to make, what I still need to do though, is I still need to make a, um, a video on YouTube explaining what it is, like how it's going to work and telling people about the, the Skype lessons. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to release it though, but only because I have so many things going on right now. Um, I definitely want to do it for this summer. I think even before the summer hits, um, probably in early June, uh, we'll get it started. This week, I really, really want to get like this house process, you know, continue moving on. I did some progress with it a while ago, and uh, you know, I've been so busy since. But Tanny says, I have seen other. So Skype lessons coming soon. T Tanny says, I've seen other channels that are not nearly as good as yours. You are an inspiration. Thank you very much, Tanny. I really appreciate that. Mike says, you are my only Oregon teacher. All right. I wish I knew a bit more about the actual Oregon because Oregon always seemed very interesting to me. I just never got an opportunity to learn it. I've tried many other teachers, but no one is easy to learn from as Tim. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. It really, it really keeps me going. Okay. All right. Any other questions about what we talked about tonight? Remember that we're off next week. We will be meeting again. Um, the week after, at least I'm pretty sure if I take any more time off, I will let you know. Um, but I think, I think just next week off will be fine. All right. Uh, let's see. T there are other good channels out there, but Tim is the most consistent and provides a live stream that allows him to speak to the students and answer questions. That is true. I am one of the only ones that does regular live streams. I've, I've seen live streams on other channels before other piano channels, but they're like very off and on. Um, I, yeah, I don't want, I don't want to mention the channel. There's another channel that does live streams, but they're very like the channel. I'm not going to mention what it is, but it's very clear that the channel was bought by like a company at some point. That's like, if you were watching my videos and then all of a sudden I was replaced with like a cast of like these teacher like i don't i don't know like like it wouldn't be me anymore on the channel at all it'd be all these like strangers and it's always like a different person i'm not going to mention the channel name because i don't want to send you over there but not that they're bad i'm just saying it's clear to me that they were uh somebody sold their channel and now it's like way different they do live streams but they're kind of i don't know they don't really they don't interact Okay, I uh, gotta go eat some dinner, says Ryan. I will get back to my regular practice and send you some new playing videos. All right, looking forward to it. Have a good night and take care. I've definitely been better about getting back to emails. Um, only on like a rare occasion will I miss one. And I always try like on a Sunday to go through my old emails because every once in a while I'll be like, oh my gosh, this person's been waiting a few days. But I've been a lot better at that. Uh, okay, so send them over whenever you're ready. Adria says, I have a channel that I'm trying to grow. I only have seven subs. I'm trying to add more content like vlogs and behind the scenes if it wasn't so, if I wasn't so camera shy. Yeah, it takes some time to get over that for sure. Uh, everybody go subscribe to Adria's channel. So hopefully we, hopefully we can get you up to 10 subs, uh, Adria. Mike says, I set my organ to a, for a nine grand piano practice that way. I'll do a nine foot grand piano. Nice, nice. I played on a nine foot before. They're really nice. 
Nine foot Steinway. Uh, you too, Rich. Talk to you both soon. All right, talk to you later, Ryan. Thank you for coming out to our classroom. Appreciate you coming by today. Rich says, how much would you sell your channel for? Uh, I would never sell my channel. At least, you know, people always tell me, though, never say never. Um, I would not sell my channel unless somebody offered me, like, a... I don't even want to put a number on it, but I was going to say a billion. Because <laughs> a billion, it would be like, okay, I could sell my channel for a billion and then create, like, the best piano channel ever um, with that billion dollars. So uh, then I would tell everybody to unsubscribe from this channel and subscribe to my new one. I don't know if that's cheating, <laughs> cheating of an answer, but that's what I would do. Okay, uh, a corporate takeover and then commercial interruptions every uh, three seconds. How do I get to her channel from here? Um, Adria, um, I think if you click on Adria's name, right? Wait, no, you can't. I thought you could do that. Um, Adria, let us know what your channel is so we can go sub to you. Mike says, Tim, I love your casual approach and friendly down-to-earth attitude. You're so easy to learn from. Thanks. You're very welcome, Mike. Thank you for coming out to our live streams. Very much appreciated that you're a student of ours. I really like um, everybody here. I mean, like, you guys are all, like, we have a lot of uh, returning people here tonight. Oh, three minutes. That mark is for minutes. Oh, that's true. The little thing like that. All right. Yeah, go subscribe to Adria, everybody. Um, okay. Any other questions about, you know, what we're talking about tonight? Um, maybe I'll talk about the, um, the, the website for a minute. I go to Guitar Center at the mall and try out all the keyboards. My girlfriend hates it. <laughs> Oh, man, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. You're still playing on the Yamaha, uh, Rich. Tanny says, when you hover over somebody's name, there are three vertical dots. Click on the dots, and you can go to their channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's to the right. I forgot about that. I tried to click on their name. That's true. Okay, yeah, you click go to channel. So everybody go to Adria's channel. Bart Mooney just bought a real piano. <laughs> that's me and my wife, says Ryan. Uh, congratulations, Barb. Hopefully it's a nice piano. But any new piano is always really, really exciting. All right, everybody, before we go, I mean, we're sticking around here for a few more minutes. Um, but I do want to talk about the website because I have to plug the website. It, it helps keep us keep the lights on. Okay, students, I really want to tell you about my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com because I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn a lot more about piano and music. So whether you're a beginner, just starting out, you need a good review, you got a, you're an intermediate student, or you are an advanced student, there are th definitely classes and a lot of material here for you to learn. There's instructional videos in the same style that you find over here on the YouTube channel. They are exclusive to the courses though, so you won't find them over here. Uh, but also you're gonna have worksheets, you're gonna have printable sheet music examples, and a lot of other things to not only help you just learn the information like you do with the videos, but practice it and master it as well. So there's a lot more material over there to uh, keep you learning than what's on the YouTube channel. So if you like it over here, go to pianolessonsontheweb.com um, now and check out what we have to offer. Use code YouTube during checkout to get 15% off any course or any course packs. And of course, you can email me, tim at lessonsontheweb.com with any questions you might have about the courses. So I just want to let you know about that. It's a great way to not only learn a lot more about piano, but support our channel as well. I think there's a link in the description. Uh, there should be anyway. Thank you, I will, says Barbara. Makes a huge difference. An old Baldwin, nice. Upright, okay. Nice, Barb. Adria says, thanks, everybody. All right. You're welcome, Adria, no problem. Ryan says, congrats, enjoy. I love my traditional um, so much more than my electric. The good things about electric, though, is that they don't go out of tune. They're easier to move. But I do love um, a good piano. Ugh. 
Excuse me, man, I got burps going on today. Ryan says, I bought a YCG 185 grand for a few months ago. Loving it. Nice. Yeah, you can't get the same level of expression on a keyboard. Like, this one does okay, but a lot of them can't. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, I think I'm just going to like kind of watch the comments go by for a few minutes. Um, if you have any other questions about playing in 6-8, let me know. Let me um, tell you what's coming up in the calendar. By the way, Adria had been asking me, at least I believe it was Adria, about a donate button. Um, or no, 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 it wasn't Adria. It was Abigail. Uh, a donate button. So if you don't want to pick up any courses necessarily, you just want to donate, you can do so now through our community page. You can also click on the Get a Piano Lessons on the Web shirt, which if you notice, that's what I've been wearing for, you know, the last, um, I don't know, few months actually, a couple of months now. So you can actually buy the same shirt I have. It's the same one I'm wearing now actually um, over on that link there. And that's another way to help out our channel so there's a lot of things to choose from based on what you might want uh rich has just given us a five dollar super chat thank you for your help tim you're very very welcome rich very much appreciated okay um oh yeah so friday and sunday you will see the calendar update tomorrow i think and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move those, the 25th and the 27th lesson, which I think are going to be really, really good lessons. Actually, Fridays, the 20, the one on the 25th, I've changed the lesson premise from uh, how to read basic rhythms to how to read any rhythm. It's going to be a chart I'm making that you're going to be able to follow. And say you have like a, a quarter note and then, you know, an eighth, two sixteenths, and then a triplet. You're going to be able to follow the chart and actually be able to count out the rhythms. I actually think it's going to make things a lot easier for you if you are um, looking to be able to read, you know, both simple and complicated rhythms quickly. So that's going to be a bit more interesting than what I have written down there. Um, so anyway, and then tips on memorization. I've never done a lesson on that before. I think that one's going to be great too. We're going to be moving those two um, to the week after the one on the first and the third. So we're still keeping the ones here, the tips on how to teach yourself to play piano and how to get better at sight reading. We did a sight reading lesson. This one's how to get better at it. I think a lot of people have been wanting that. Um, so those will be moved around. So check back, you know, probably Tuesday and everything should be in its rightful place. Okay, uh, Tim, how can I use the keyboard pedal without bleeding over the notes too much? I'm unable to use half pedal technique. Uh, what I would do, if you can't use half pedal, which actually I can't either, what I do is I like kind of use a flutter kind of thing. So um, say I'm playing for Elise. And you can't see it because I don't have that camera hooked up anymore <laughs> that shows that. But what, I, what I'm doing is I am, uh, I have the pedal held down. So I'm like I'm I'm lifting it up like a bit more often. Just whenever I hear it start to bleed, I'm actually using my ears a little bit more. So I call it fluttering because it's like a uh, it's like an up and down kind of motion. I mean, you're going to be doing that anyway on a real piano, except it's going to be more like measure to measure, like end of the measure, you pop it up back down. With this, you're like just kind of doing this kind of thing and you're doing it based on ear so if you hear it start to blend together too much then you gotta go you know increase your frequency of how you're going up and down
It depends on what the music is doing. Just like that. Um, that reminds me. I don't want to. I don't want to make a like a commitment to it right now. I want to know uh, anybody who's still here. Would you be interested in me doing a live stream once a week of just me practicing? Like I'm like not even really explaining what I'm doing. I'm just practicing. Like would you be would you be interested in that? <laughs> of me just playing, like me just playing the piano for like an hour or half an hour or something like that. So let me know. Sharkfoot says yes. All right. Good to know, Sharkfoot. Uh, let's see. My pedal sucks. Um, it's like a go-kart pedal. All right. Well, you can always try to get a new pedal. I know Roland makes some decent ones. Bernadine says nice. I would be interested. Uh, raise his hand. Okay. Oh, yes. Most definitely Tim says Laredo. Um, and I know that Shesk actually, if everybody remembers Shesk from way back, uh, he is the one that actually first recommended I do that. And I like, for a while, I was like, I don't know if anybody would want to do that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I did put some out and they were like, they were okay. But I think it would do better if I did it like every week. Like every week, do one. And then people know, like, okay, on Wednesdays. This is what uh oh important updates are pending. Let me let me say no. Remind me later. There we go. Okay, but anyway, um yeah, I think if I did it at the same time every week, everybody'd be like, all right, you know, it's Wednesday. Um, uh, today is the day we're gonna listen to Tim practice. Yes, says Brenda. So I'm getting lots of yeses. Uh, David says, sure, get a lot from watching your hands. Most definitely says Laredo. I like to watch you practice. Okay, great. So, um, like I said, I don't want to make a commitment to it right now, but I'm thinking that if I can do a live stream where all I do is practice, I'm not going to explain what I'm doing for the most part. Every once in a while I may say, oh, you know, I'm going to do it again because of this reason, but I'm not, not going to explain it because that would make it really easy for me because I need to practice anyway, guys. I, I really need to get back into practicing like we all do, and I feel like if I up the practice – that you're all going to up the practice because you're all going to say, well, he's doing it. You know, he's our leader, um, you know, or so, so called. It was kind of weird calling myself that. But, you know, if you see me doing it, you're going to be more likely to do it, too, because I've been bad. Although, to be fair, I do play piano every single day and I probably play for a decent amount of time every day. But I'm not playing things I want to practice, which is the the shame. And I think that's why. Um, I'm struggling a little bit because, um, because I really need to reignite my love for piano to tell you the truth. And I, and it kind of goes along with what we were talking about this last time. Um, you know, in the last lesson we had on Friday, somebody was, I think it was, I don't quite remember, but somebody was saying that they, they were like thinking about quitting I know it was a, a woman, but I, she was here earlier. Let me see. Let me see. I can, I can tell you who it was if I see their name. It was Angie. I think it was Angie. So I think Angie brought up, um, that she was like, I don't know. I'm not just, I'm just not feeling into it or whatever. And I said, you know, it's a very common thing to feel and that we all feel that way sometimes. So I'm feeling that a little bit now. And I think that if I get into a regular practice routine and play things and do things that I want to do, I think that will help. And I also think that like me just playing for you uh, will help too. And that's, it's going to be an easy way to do it. It would definitely be a motivator for me. I'd like to see you tackle a tough song and show your process of learning it. Yeah, that's a good thing. So I'd probably pick one piece and I'd work on it. Um, I mean, I work on it when I'm not streaming it too, but I would really at least be getting that time in, you know, at least once a week 
um, in front of everybody, like in front of you guys, to show you what I'm doing. When I lose passion for piano, I try to listen to my favorite songs and slowly my love comes back. Yeah, which I believe we've talked about before, Rich, because I remember about a year ago, uh, we, we were talking about that during this live stream, and then I think we had a Skype lesson in um, the summer where you had mentioned that as well. So, yeah, you know, I think that's maybe what I'm going to do is listen to my favorite songs and slowly, um, you know, I'll, I'll remember why I started it all. I'm not quitting, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm definitely not quitting. Um, but I just need to like kind of be a little bit, I just need, need to do something a little different, you know? I work Wednesday mornings, maybe, uh, into afternoons, depending on how much work depends on what time. Well, the good news, Adria, is that if you can't make it and it, it might not necessarily be Wednesday, Wednesday would be a good day for me to do it though. Um, but uh, the, uh, anyway, what I was about to say, <laughs> it got tr trailed off there. Anyway, what I was going to say is that if you can't make it on Wednesday for a live stream, that the recording will still be provided to you. So at least you'll still be able to get the content and watch me do it. Listen to Final Fantasy songs. Yeah, you know what? I might take you up on that offer. My brother made beautiful furniture. Uh, when told he should do it for a living, he said no. That would take the fun out of it. Yeah, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend about um, making like a, and I've gotten a lot of, what am I doing? I've got, I was talking to a friend a few weeks ago about making like a video gaming channel on YouTube and like how I thought about it, but like I didn't really want to do that because I feel like it would ruin it for me because then I would feel like I had to do it. And then you would also have to play games that were just popular like if you wanted to get you know get your channel to grow you know like um like these guys on twitch but i don't think i'm going to do that i am going to make a different type of channel at some point um something with like that's fun and um i i love comedy like i said so i'm going to try to incorporate that but that's not for a while now i need to keep on this piano thing for um maybe even a couple more years before i really get into something else but i would really like maybe in a year start to work on another project Barbara says, my brother, okay, I read that already. Kuja theme is great, says Rich. That that one is awesome. I remember uh, back when I was in, like, um, high school, I would listen to that a lot. Back when they had, do you remember um, anybody who's, like, my age remembers? Do you guys remember, like, Morpheus and LimeWire? And um, it was, like, they were all spinoffs of Napster, except you could download, um, what was another one? Kazaa? Cause ah, you could, you could download um, like movies and pirated everything uh, back then. It was the greatest, and I remember downloading it off of there, and listening to it all the time. Uh, the Tiger sixty two says, "I quit a long time ago, and I regret ever minute of it. Uh, now it's the best thing to do is never quit and take a break. Maybe look for some other music, maybe jam a little bit with somebody else, but never quit. That's very true. Very good advice from the Tigers, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to quit. Uh, it would be awful if I quit. Um, first of all, I'd be in trouble, uh, and second of all, uh, I don't want to quit. I don't want that, and I know I don't want that, and I know I would regret it like immensely right away, too. I, I would regret it like tomorrow if I quit. I guarantee it. Um, and it would bother me more. So, you know, you always find ways, uh, and it's part of the process, like we talked about. You're always going to feel like, sometimes you're like, oh man, I'm just working so hard at this. I feel like, um, you know, I'm not getting anywhere, or maybe I'm not working as hard as I could be, which isn't my problem. I think it's the other way around. I, I just really need to get, like, playing the piano again, rather than teaching it 24-7. Um, so I think that idea with the live streaming of me playing uh, would kind of help help with that. All right, everybody. Um, Tim, I have a funny story about Final Fantasy VII. Okay, go for it. We'll we'll share it together. I'm trying to think if I have any funny stories about Final Fantasy VII. 
When I was a kid, I played Final Fantasy VII, but I had never played an RPG before. You know what? That was one of the first ones I played. So I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know you had to fight to build your characters up. I ran from almost every fight. <laughs> that is funny because I know what happened next. You probably got to like, you might have beaten the first boss, maybe. You probably got like a couple bosses in and you were probably just getting wrecked. Wrecked. You know what game I love nowadays that you're going to be like, I don't know, maybe surprises Stardew Valley. If you don't know what Stardew Valley is, it's a game where you uh, harvest, you're like a farmer and you raise and harvest crops, but there's like so many other things to do. You can go fishing and cooking and all that. And um, it's just really relaxing to play. Every time you take a break, it just means that you're building um, a plateau, which is very important in music. So yeah, take breaks, take a uh, a break and take a breather so that's what i'm going to do next week i think that that's going to help and then also just changing things up a little bit i also found what helps for me like when i'm feeling like even depressed or just so, like feeling that something's wrong which i don't necessarily feel right now actually mentally i feel pretty good i'm just feeling a little burnout is to change up what i'm doing like change my um my routine you know Do you practice a whole song or parts of it at a time? I practice parts of it at a time. I'll obviously start with the first page and then maybe learn the second page. But then, um, but yeah, I, I might do it a page at a time or a section at a time. But yeah, I do it in sections. Okay, Rich says, uh, I made it all the way to the end of the first disc. Really? When you leave Midgar? And my character level is so low, I made it to the boss at the end of the first disc. And he touched me once and I died. I'm trying to think about, is that the one where, I can't believe I, I remember this. Is this the one where you're leaving Midgar and you're like on the motorcycles and then you have to fight the bosses like like intermittently through that? I was so mad, says Rich. I threw the entire game against the wall and it shattered. I had anger problems. You know what? I've heard that so often that it's crazy. Uh, of friends of mine, I've even seen friends of mine do that where they, they would like, get so mad after losing a game they would throw their controller and it would hit the wall or something and just explode into a million pieces uh, I was never like that I'm a very anger adverse person as you can probably tell I'm just not I think that works in my favor more than anything because I think a lot of students are you know a lot of students like see that I'm not going to punch them if they make a mistake <laughs> barbara says good idea to multitask your practice and making your video quota yeah exactly so i need to balance things a little bit better but i i can do it uh the boss was in mount uh naval helm yeah oh man it might be longer than i thought since i i played that one I was gonna say I should play it again, but I don't. I don't have time to play. Like, I love older games, but now it's like I've. I only have so much time that I like to just play newer games now because I like just. I'd rather have the newer experience than just play something I've already beaten, you know, like five times. When you practice a song, can you also share the music? Um, possibly. What I can do, Cecilia, is I can at least share a an affiliate link with you because some pieces are really hard to find for free um and also the ones you pay for the quality of the sheet music is generally better so what i'm gonna do is if i can find a free version that's good i'll give it to you and then uh if not i'll give you like a link to amazon where if you buy it from that link it will it will help me out i have advice for the classes rich okay go for it What is it? Um, don't run away from every fight in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, go ahead, Rich, whenever you're ready.
All right, so Rich says, when you're learning a song, make sure you choose the best fingering possible. Make it as comfortable as possible. Might take a while to figure it out, but if you choose the right fingering, the song is easy to play. Yeah, it makes it way easier to play. In fact, something I need to talk about more is fingering. I made a few fi um, fingering technique lessons last year. They're not... People don't... What, what I need to do is instead of making a lesson on it again, I just need to incorporate more of that information into every lesson I do. Finger is very important. A tip, um, I want to build on that tip that Rich has for you, is right in your fingering. Because you want to make sure that you're using the same fingering every time. And writing it in is the way to do it. Now you may be saying, oh, I can remember it. It's no problem. Well, what if you take a week off from playing or you go on vacation and you come back? Um, so what will happen over time is you'll start doing it differently each time. In fact, you might even just start getting it wrong. Uh, you don't want that. So write in your fingering. That's what I mainly focus on, and it definitely makes it easier. I learned a song in three days. I just have to speed it up. Nice. Nice, Rich. Feel free to send some links over when you get a chance. If you don't know the fingering, look at someone uh, on YouTube. That is true. Like, if you you can especially look at, like, classical, not classical, but, like, professional players, and you can copy their fingering as well. Sometimes it shows fingering you wouldn't even think to use. Yeah, that's true. You'd be like, yeah. I remember my professor in college would do that. He'd be like, try this fingering. And I'm like, what? It sounds ridiculous. But no, it worked. Worked really well. Okay, let me do a formal outro here, and then I think we're going to call it a, an evening since we're a little bit over time, but not a problem. We had a good discussion tonight. Let me think about what I want everybody to do. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think about how to phrase it. I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. If you're looking for more, looking to learn more, um, learn a lot more about piano and all things related, music theory, improvisation, ear training, and a lot more, head over to pianolessonsontheweb.com and take a look at what my courses can offer you there. Use code YouTube to get 15% off. It's a great way to both learn a lot more about piano music and support the channel at the same time. So go over to Piano Lessons on the web.com today. Good thing Tim do some improv. Do you have a current favorite um, pianist? Not really. Like I said, I need to get like back into playing piano. I need to actually get listening into piano um, again because I feel like I've fallen out of touch in certain ways. I still can play and I still play all the time, but I needed to play for me, you know? Rayo says, thank you, Tim and fellow students, for making my piano learning such a pleasant and truly wonderful experience or worthwhile experience. I truly appreciate from the deepest fiber of my extremely humble heart. Cheers. Thank you very much, Laredo. I really, really um, appreciate it. Thank you very much, um, you know, Rich, for chiming in and sharing your experiences with us at OL. Uh, Tim, I got the Super Nintendo Classic. Only 80 bucks. Nice. Nice. I thought about getting one, but... Like I said, I just, I don't know. I only have so many hours in a day. I, I've been playing my Switch. Um, I like the Switch because I can take it anywhere. And I like to play video games at night before I go to bed because otherwise I will work. And my brain will be like lit up thinking about things. And then I won't be able to sleep. So go like playing video games the last few hours that I'm awake. Not even a few hours, like the last one or two hours. Uh, kind of just helps helps slow me down a little bit. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for being a part of our classroom. It really means the world to me. Our classroom is getting stronger. I can feel it. I can feel it and see that, you know, see it from more and more people coming in, more and more returning students as well, which is really exciting. So thank you, everybody. Um, have a great two weeks. I'm going to see you again 
uh, probably, let me give you a date so you know when I'm going to write it down. So we are off the 25th and the 27th. So I'm going to see you actually again on, oh, wow, the 1st of June. So I'll see you then. And um, that's Sunday, too, on the 3rd. So everybody have a great Memorial Day and a great week in general. So I'll talk to you soon and have a good one. Great for an old school gamer, says Rich. I agree. Super Nintendo was one of the one of the greatest ones. I'm personally a Genesis kid because that's what I grew up with, uh, and I have a lot of like fond memories of. But the Super Nintendo, I admit, very well could be superior to the the Sega Genesis. It's just that I that just isn't what I had uh, when I grew up. Hello, Bernie says, thank you. You're very welcome. Sunset says, bye. All right, bye bye, Sunset. It was great talking with everybody. And uh, have a good holiday.